So this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a long time now. I'm talking years, ever since Final Fantasy VII Advent Children released, and that is the depiction of Cloud Strife in that film, as well as other post Final Fantasy VII content. There's always been a major criticism that Cloud is too emo, mopey, and uncharacteristically down in Advent Children, and that's not how Cloud should be. He should be a sassy badass. But I'm here to argue that his character development from OG Final Fantasy VII all the way to the end of Advent Children makes 100% sense. Major spoilers for OG FF7 and Advent Children for this video. Hell, even some slight spoilers for Dirge of Cerberus 2. So we have to start with what Cloud experiences in the original game. He promises his childhood friend and crush, depending on what side of the Tifa Aerith ship you fall on, <laughs> that he would become a soldier first class and always be there for her to save her, which he is unable to do. He is subjected to Shinra experiments and is exposed to a severe amount of Mako, causing a high level of poisoning, leaving him comatose. He witnesses one of his closest friends in Shinra, Zack Fair, die while protecting him, further contributing to Cloud's trauma where he begins to lose himself and take on elements of Zack's persona and memories, and he fails to protect Aerith from Sephiroth, leading to her death. Later on in the story, Cloud again becomes comatose after being controlled by Sephiroth. He falls into the livestream where Tifa helps him piece together his real memories and identity to become the true Cloud. After that, there really isn't too much downtime for the characters. They realize Sephiroth has to be defeated and that doing so could be a suicide mission. Everyone takes a brief bit of time for themselves before heading to the Northern Crater to eventually whoop a dad ass on Sephiroth. Sephiroth is defeated, the world nearly ends, until Aerith and the livestream save the planet. Now, if I remember correctly, Advent Children takes place two years after OG FF7, which means Cloud is definitely going to be struggling with everything he dealt with over a majority of his younger life. Now, I'm no brain scientist, but I am an expert in depression and self-doubt, so I think I'm a bit qualified to talk about this stuff. In Advent Children, it seems pretty clear to me that Cloud is dealing with some severe PTSD and survivor's guilt. After having his mental break, every Everything comes flooding back to him at once, and he never really has the time to deal with it. It's, okay, you're Cloud again, let's go fight Sephiroth. He's still struggling with what he perceives are his failures, not being able to protect Tifa, Zack's death and eventual erasure from his own memory, and the death of Aerith. He feels like a failure who is of no use to anyone, and he feels massive guilt for the aforementioned things. Why did I survive if I'm not good for anything? On top of that, he's contracted Geostigma and is physically struggling. He figures, I'm sick and of no use to anyone, I might as well cut myself off from everyone and die alone. It's what he feels he deserves. So him being mopey, sad, and a recluse makes absolute sense in terms of his character development. Later in the film, after having a heart-to-heart -heart with Tifa, you know, the whole dilly-dally, shilly-shally stuff, which admittedly <laughs> could have been written better, but the point Tifa was making is that he needs to stop wasting time blaming himself for things that were not his fault. He comes back to help the party fight Bahamut Sin, but before he joins the battle, he tells Tifa, I feel lighter. Maybe I lost some weight. All that dilly-dallying. Effectively saying that he is no longer being weighed down by his self-doubt, guilt, and perceived failures. Cloud gets his mojo back, beats Bahamut Sin with the help of his friends, fights Kadaj, I love the part where he smirks as the high wind pulls back to let Cloud handle the fight solo. It's like Cloud realizes the party believes in him and they know he can kick Kadaj's ass without any issue. Eventually he clashes with Sephiroth where he begins to face doubt again until getting a much needed pep talk from Zack Fair, reaffirming to Cloud that not only has he beaten Sephiroth before, but he still has a lot of things left to fight for. Cloud beats Sephiroth, is fatally wounded, and then taken to the Sector 5 church in the slums. We see Cloud in the Sector 5 church surrounded by his friends, the children of the slums, and a surplus of healing rain that is curing people of their geostigma. Uh, thank you, Aerith. It's almost kind of like a literal and metaphorical baptism where Cloud is washed away of all of his Guilt and becomes who he's truly meant to be. The dude even smiles. We even see a brief bit of this in Dirge of Cerberus when Vincent speaks to Cloud on the phone. You can hear how much lighter Cloud is in that conversation, handling his shit while still showing concern for Vincent. And what about you? What do you think? Right, you can count on us. When I'm through, there won't be a single second thing. <laughs> right. And as for you... Don't worry. Leave deep ground to me. Huh. Can you hold on a second? Told you Don't to. go getting yourself killed now. 
He's now progressed in his arc and is a new Cloud who is confident and caring, but also a legit badass. Now, this is something that I really hope they touch upon in the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy. Imagine playing through the third part of the trilogy, you beat Sephiroth, and then you have a screen that flash forwards two years, and now we're getting to play through a reworked version of Advent Children, where the writing can be so much better, and they can really hammer home all of the things that Cloud is really struggling with. I love Advent Children. <laughs> it's not a great movie, and the writing's not always great either. But you look at the writing in Final Fantasy VII Remake and how much better it was compared to all of the stuff in the compilation. So I think taking a second look at Advent Children, rewriting that story and reworking it to just be better, I think would be a really cool way to cap off the third part of the trilogy. Don't just end it with the fight in the Northern Crater. Let us redo Advent Children. And it makes so much more sense with this remake trilogy and its timeline and all the shenanigans that Sephiroth is pulling off. I think it could be a really fun and exciting way to end the trilogy. With that being said, that is the video. Please let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think of my analysis of Cloud's character arc from the original game all the way to Advent Children and Dirge of Cerberus. Do you agree? Do you think maybe they went a little too ham on Cloud being down on himself and dealing with a lot of trauma? Or do you completely disagree and think that by the time they got to Advent Children, Cloud should have been a different person. Let me know in the comments down below and make sure to check out my previous videos where we talk about the interview that Yoshinori Katase did with the VG247 website where he talks about all things Final Fantasy VII. I'm talking the inception of the 2D version all the way up until Rebirth and beyond. I am Curious Corduroy. I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.